In this episode of On My Hoops, we play a little GM and try to fix those Los Angeles Lakers. Plus, tank goodness, the Utah Jazz once thought to be a front runner for the number one overall pick, are actually pretty good. And congratulations to Jacques Vaughn, who was named head coach of the Brooklyn Nets. We'll discuss that more. So keep it locked right here to On My Hoops. Welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome back to On My Hoops, where we talk about what we've seen, the latest and greatest from the wide world of the NBA this week. I'm your host, John Jay, and with me is always the incomparable D. Snow from the go. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another great installment of On My Hoops. Excited to see everybody. Another great week of basketball. How your week been, Jay? Man, it was beautiful, man. It was a lot going on this week. I tell you what, though, um, Tuesday was hard, though. Tuesday was a long night. But uh, aside from that, it was some good some good hoops this week, man, and a lot to talk about. So hey, and hopefully everybody just... went out there and um, exercised their right to vote, man. You know, because no we ain't got nothing else to do. So hopefully y'all went out there and voted. That way no you, know, you can't complain about what's going on in your community if you're not voting. Remember that, all right? Yes, no sir, doubt. Let's get back no, to doubt. The hoops. <laughs> nah, no doubt. So, man, before we get started, man, go ahead and give us a like, subscribe, comment, and share, man, so YouTube can get the ball rolling on this algorithm and let us skyrocket, man, so we can become your new favorite show. Thirsty. So let's jump right on into this, man. Those LA Lakers, man, you wearing the hat on, you got the Kobe shirt. If you was in charge, man, how would you fix these Lakers, man? I should have worn my black um, Kobe hat today because um, I think it's time for a funeral, man. It's time, to break, <laughs> it's time to break up the band, bro. I'm just being honest, man. I've been a, I've been a Laker fan since 01, 02. I've been a Kobe fan since 98, probably 99. But Lakers, 01, 02, one shot I got that. Been following them for a long time. And, uh, I mean, it was – to me, I don't care what nobody says. Yes, they won a championship a few years ago in, in, um, in Disney and all, but I mean, look what all they gave up for that one ring. You know, it wasn't like it was the first ring ever like they did out in Toronto. You know, so I really think it's time to break the team up, man. They gave up a lot for that one ring and we're not going anywhere fast. Nowhere. We're not going anywhere. And, um, the big thing I'm looking at is if the Lakers end up with one of the worst records in the league, their, their, their pick goes to New Orleans. We got to make something happen quick. There's no way that they can go into next season looking at this same team with the same money on the book. I mean, what you think? Now, now uh, well, in a second, I'm going to give you my thoughts. But in regards to what you said about that pick, now I haven't looked up the exact protections, if, if there are any the on that pick. If they don't make it, the playoffs, the pick belongs to the Pelicans. Yeah. So and they don't even have a top <laughs> three protection on it. If it's a lottery pick, it's going. It's wow, coming. that's... That's, that's what it took to get AD. That's what it took to get AD. <laughs> that's some bad. That's some bad GMing right there. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the same guy that just got a, um, a a renewal contract. So you know, we're waiting to see. I don't know if they're doing that for past. You know, sometimes they pay guys for what they did before. But yeah, I don't know, man. Um, Palinka got to make some moves, man. He really needs to make a splash happen. You know, between now and um All Star break because. Two and ten. I mean, I don't know what this team is going to do. They can go on a ten game winning streak and turn things around, but we're still looking at the play in. You know, I, I was totally off on what I, you know, thought in the beginning of the season and what I thought I would see from them. I'm gonna tell you what. I know my opinion is probably not going to be the most popular, but GM is not a popularity contest. And in all honesty, I'm Trey LeBron. That's going to give me the most back, the biggest return. And he's been there, what, four? This is year five. You got the one chip. Congratulations. You will go down in history forever. But aside from that, this experiment has not worked. I totally so, agree. I, I mean, totally I, I would love the for them to got. have I would he's love the for them to have, have. A, a team around them, but it's not happening. And he's yeah. running out of time. He's almost 40. I would move him. Somebody will still pay an arm and a leg to get him. So that's the route that I would take. I would think, yeah, it's, it's especially if you if you ain't got that draft pick either, you got to get some more picks. Yeah, you got to get some more tough. picks in it. It's gonna be tough. Um, 
And at this point, uh, I really just think that the Lakers just need to, they need to figure something out. Um, Russ is, um, Russ is not movable. I mean, what's the best thing you can get back for AD? They don't have a lot else on the roster to really, you know, make moves with. So the best thing that might be to do is to trade LeBron. You have to think about the team. You can't think about the players. You can't think about this year. You got to think about the future. That's what it's all about, especially as a GM and as an owner. What are we going to be looking like in the next five to 10 years? And right now, it's, it's, it's a dark cloud over the Lakers. I mean, I don't see them being in a championship game no time soon. And that's one of the last times you can really say that about the Lakers. You know, I can't say the last time because they did have a, you know, the ball time when they had, you know, Ball and, and Brandon Ingram and all those guys. But I feel like if they kept that young core together, man, what would they be now? Look at New Orleans, you know? Yeah. So. And if you the Lakers, you might be able to call up a Cleveland or something like that and get some of them young pieces back. Maybe a Mobley or something like that. That might be the I ticket mean, for them. And he might want to go back home. I think it would be a good look. Send him back to Cleveland. I mean, they get some few pieces back. The Lakers need to make something drastic happen. They need to make a big move, not just yeah. a small one. So. Yeah, most definitely. So, yeah, on from that sad situation to a, a surprising situation. The Utah Jazz are leading the Western Conference. They are the best team in the West right now. East Snow, can Utah keep this momentum going? I think they can, man. Um, we know these days when it comes to the NBA, it's about coaching. They have a great coach out there. They've been playing ball, having a great record the last few years. Yes, they don't do well in the playoffs, but regular season, I mean, they play great. They, they, play, they always have a good regular season. Yes, they lost a lot of their big pieces. They lost Goubert. They lost, you know, um, Spider Mitchell. But they retooled with a lot of young guys with chips on their shoulders that have something to prove. I mean, yeah. like we just talked about GM. Let's talk about GM again. The GM over there uh, for, for Utah is doing a great job, man. Yes, they're not tanking like everybody's supposed that they should do. But he might not be happy, though. I mean, he, he pro- he's probably not. But at the same time, I think it's a 17% chance of getting it. If they fixed it so that way, hey, there's yeah. a chance. Yeah. That, I mean, it's not guaranteed. Yeah. So at the end of the day, man, I'm I'm happy to see that they're playing well because this is what you want to see in the NBA. We're tired of seeing these games where we have those teams where you oh I'm not even watching that game tonight. It's been a lot of years just like that. And now every time there's a game on, I mean last night, I mean, I know we're kinda of jumping on, but hey, to see what Sacramento did, that was man to the Lakers last night. What a comeback. I mean, to to see, you know, the little swiper put up thirty two and three quarters, you know, hey. My son called him little like Mike. <laughs> but um, but man, um, that's the thing. Like, I love seeing these young teams that can come out and show us some good ball too. You know, and um, and that's what's going on around the league. You know, you got you, you know, you never know who's gonna be good. You know, you got your power couple that's that's gonna always be who they are, but we got a lot of little nice young stories going on right now. Yeah, this this is the definition of the word I constantly like to use, parody. This is it. Uh, this is what it means. Teams like Utah and Portland leading the West. Um, but yeah, shout out to I believe Will Hardy is his name. First time head coach over there in Utah. Yeah, this yeah, was not supposed job. to happen. They yeah. was expected to get the number one pick, but like you said, since they went to the new top four format, the last place team never gets the number one spot anymore. So and but I think having Danny Ainge behind him, you know, with a good coaching staff matters. Yes, he is a rookie coach, but he got a nice coaching staff. Danny Ainge knows what he's doing. Plus, like I said, the mm-hmm. players, man, when you look at the Lakers and how they're put together, look at the Nets and how they're put together. Look at Utah. Look at the players. Look at they from, got some from top to the bottom. They have shooters, rebounders. They got guys that are just going to come out there and give it all. They got, you know, they got Conley that's going to come out there and just be a point guard. They have so many great pieces. Marketing finally has a position where he could be who he is. He's been yeah. asked to do so much. Now he's asked to just be him, and he is flourishing. So, I mean, I think that's what it's about, too. Sometimes it's about the right players in the right position and the right situation. Yeah, you're right about that. It was the perfect timing for him to, you know, he didn't been through with Chicago and Cleveland, but he's always been the two, three, four guy. Now he can come in and just be comfortable and fill it up. There is no hierarchy as far as top shooter on that squad. That's, it's all even money. Right now, he's the all-star on that team. Let's be honest here. Larry yeah. Martin is the all-star on that team. So Yeah, legit. Like, he is yeah. legit ball. Yeah, this yeah. is the Lori that he's, we thought we were drafting back in Chicago. He's always been a solid player. It's just now he has a chance to shine. Just like he was inconsistent. 
Yeah, but you know, it's about being put in that right position. Even with the Bulls, he had a few times where they tried, but he wasn't that, he wasn't the number one go-to guy. And now that's his, he's the number one, he's the one we're looking to go out there and get it. He's being yeah. fed the ball in the right positions, and that matters. I think a lot of that too, though, is this is his third shot. He'd been yeah. moving around a couple of times, and that is a motivator for a lot of guys. Because I think he had a lot of opportunities in Chicago. I mean, he, it wasn't to the end of his term that way that he started coming off the bench, and then him and Billy just wasn't gelling, but he was inconsistent. He always showed the ability. I remember when he, he went on that February streak of 20-plus point games, talk around town in Chicago was that he was the best player on the team and not Zach. That, that changed quickly. But uh, it was but just I'll the inconsistency. Let's say this, too. We all know how tough it is to play in a big market. New York, yeah. Chicago, L.A., yeah. stuff like that. You go out there in Utah, there's no pressure there, man. That's the only team they have. They love you. The team loves you. The fans love you. So I think it's, you know, I really think it's about the situation, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you might be right on that one. All right, so let's move on a little bit. And although they, they won the last two games, but they were home games, what – is the cause of this slow start in Golden State. Why can they not win on the road? So, I guess we all forgot about the punch, huh? <laughs> you know? So the punch, it never happened, huh? You know? Remember, oh, it's not going to bother nobody. Everything's going to go fine. It's going to be like, I'm talking like Bernie Mac. <laughs> I like it. I, I, I like it. We might, right? do the, might do the rest of the show in that voice. <laughs> we, we might have some lights skyrocketing. You know what I mean? Because that's what they were saying. The punch didn't mean nothing. Oh, yeah, they're still friends. It's all good. Hey, we all knew that when it comes to camaraderie, friendship, boss, basketball is one of the games where it matters. You got to – we have to touch the ball. We got to – in baseball, football, hockey, not even well, hockey, you kind of got to pass the puck around a little bit. But basketball, those five guys, they have to jail. They have to be on yeah. one accord. They got to be on the same team. Look, look at Utah the last two years. And, and I saw a little um, story where Spider said that they said, oh, they want to run it back. I think that's bull crap. I think he wanted mm -hmm. out of there. I think him and Gobert lost their relationship after the COVID thing. That's real. But, I mean, man, go yeah. State, I think that punch really mattered, man. I think that punch kind of divided them a little bit. Clay is not the same player he used to be. And just Clay. real real quick, I don't want to um, um, change what you're about to say, but – uh, you, you mentioned something about Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell. I don't know if you saw on J.J. Reddick's podcast, Donovan Mitchell actually admitted he was incredibly pissed off at oh, Rudy I, Gobert. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Yeah. See, I didn't see yeah. that. Go back and I look it up. I, I, I'll try to go and find it and drop a link in the description. See, I didn't um, see that. But I, I, but I knew yes. it. You can tell, man. You can tell. Basketball is one of those sports where you can say that everything is cool, but the game, look at Ben Simmons. He swear he was yeah. ready to come back. He swear Ben Simmons hasn't played in I don't know how long. And the guy get on the court and he looks like the same exact Ben Simmons. And it's because <laughs> of body language, because of the way he feels. He, he's not comfortable out there, man. He's not happy. You know, and hopefully he can find his happiness. But I think that's what's going on in Golden State, man. We all know that they, they got that last championship out the mud. Injuries did help a little bit on other teams, you know, uh, and I, I really believe that, I mean, I, I know people were talking about they had a chance to go into a dynasty because, you know, they got these up wise men. You know, they got Kaminga. They got some other guys that can come out and play ball. But, hey, Clay, Clay was a killer. Man. Yeah. Ain't, ain't no, ain't, you know, Clay not the same player no more. Clay has, Clay has lost a notch. That's what happens when you, <laughs> you tell your Achilles. We all know that. That's yeah. the one injury nobody's ever beat. Let's and it was his defense. Know? His defense was so underrated. Oh, he's getting cooked. He's getting cooked. And that's the thing. Like, and I, not having him to be the way he was matters, man, because we all know that last year, I mean, them playing the Celtics was, a, was, was, was good for them. Why? Yeah. Because they were a veteran team that has been around for years, and this was the first time they ever made it. First coach, young team. It was perfect. It was easier for them to beat them because it was like the big boys beating the little boys. But now we all know, once you're the champ, everybody's bringing their best game for you every game. And that's what's going on. When they play against Steph and them, they're bringing it every single game. Plus, I mean, I, let's bring it up. Draymond fell off. You know, he's not the same player. You can hide a screen and throw picks all day long. That don't mean nothing no more. These guys running through those. <laughs> they running around those picks. They jumping, they jumping this block of three-point shots, you know? I, I also think that um, the young guys, the development is coming along a little slower than they expected. 
You yeah. know, you would think after coming off the championship run that they would have put in that time this offseason to improve their games, Kaminga especially. He seemed to kind of regress a little bit. Um, Wiseman, Wiseman is good. I, I give him credit. This is really his first go around. Okay. But uh, Kaminga and Moody, you would expect a level up for them this year, and we're not getting it. And not only that, I think some of the fame and the fortune is getting a pool. He's just pulling it. He, he's pulling <laughs> it from everywhere. He got, yeah, you ultra, got a bag, you he got, got a Steph green light. He got him a Steph green light right now. He's just pulling that thing. Yeah, and it's still well, early. So, I mean, I, I, I was going to say that. The first 12 I, games. So, you know, I trust we'll that. Out. We got 70 games left out there, man. I trusted uh, Steve Curl bring them together. Um, and then it's an older team, too, at least the starters. So yeah. give them a little bit of time, and they're going to get that engine running. And uh, before you know it, it's takeoff time. Yes, sir. No pun intended. Take off. <laughs> All right, so moving along. Remember at the start of this thing, we talked about these these fired young tandems. Who, who's been your favorite two-man tandem to watch so far this year, D? I got two of them. Um... The first one I'm enjoying, and this is a new one, and people ain't not, they're not gonna be ready for this one. But that in, that Embiid Maxi, a Maxi mm-hmm. is turning into a nice player, man. Without I Harden, didn't see it Harden coming. been injured, yeah. Even even when Harden was there, Maxi putting up thirty to forty points some games, carrying them. You know, Maxi yeah. is stepping into another lane that I didn't ever see from him. I saw a little bit of you know glimpses of it last year, but this year, I mean, Maxi has been man playing out of his mind. And I'm busy yeah. being a B. You know, he's still man, going he, unstoppable, <laughs> you know. But I think I think they're doing great. And, I mean, my number one time right now is Tatum and Brown. I love them boys, man. Tatum okay. and Brown, man, not only do they give you the points, they play defense. They're 9-3 and three right now. They beat some good teams. They lost their coach. For them boys to be still out there doing exactly what they're doing, man, and, and, and basically running through the East like they, like they did last year, I'm excited to see them play every time. Whenever I can see Tatum and Brown play, I'll watch, man. What's yours? Yeah, and Tatum is definitely leveled up this year, which we're going to talk about down the list today. But um, I got two of them also, um, and it's probably two that you'd expect from me, but they've given us everything we've expected in this song. The Atlanta duo, Trey Young and DeJounte Murray, it's so fun to watch, and they are balling. And then the Cavs. Garland and, and Mitchell. Um, Garland nah, started the season late. Though. That ain't enough, Garland, man. Ain't, like I said, Garland, they Garland, Garland, stay, Garland started the season <laughs> late, like I said. Okay, okay. <laughs> but, uh, but over this past week, I, I, I like the look together. But that that Atlanta duo is fun to watch, man. It is. It is. And they, they, hey, they, they playing the ball. Murray bringing that defense they didn't have last year. I'll say that. He is bringing that they defense make, that they didn't have last year. They, they played decent defense. But not at the guard, because we know yeah. Trey can't really guard nobody. They can put him on the best two guard or point guard, and he is he he locking them up. That boy, that boy, he he earned his stripes yeah. out there. I love it. I love what I'm seeing in that yeah. And then they are getting production out of Jay, uh, out of John Collins. John hey, Collins that, is. Like, you saw that Ubi call from half court the other day. Yes, yes. John Collins is alive. Well, everybody. That boy, that boy has bunny. <laughs> yeah. It's been a fun team to watch, man, and, and they yeah. they're they top five in the East right now, I believe, like four or something like that. Last I looked, yeah, oh yeah, Spider, they, Spider moved into another conversation for me this week. We're gonna talk about soon. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So yeah, it was fun time to watch. Okay, so one of my favorite segments that we always do, rookie our- report. <laughs> <laughs> My dog, let them rookies, man. <laughs> I do, man. It's the future, man. Hey, it's how it is, man. I, I, I feel it. I feel it. This is the future. This rookie report ain't going nowhere. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, I'm, I, hey, hey, I'm excited. I mean, let's talk about the rookie report. Um, of course, Paolo is leading it when it comes to who's the best rookie out there. No doubt about it. But I've been digging a little deeper this week. I said, man, I got to be on my rookie report. I can't just holler Paolo every week. Just because he's doing a great job because everybody's he earning it, that. though. He, he earning it, though. That just means he's hey, running away. He grown man in the league right now. I love seeing a kid that walks into the league and is not afraid. And I love, that's what you're seeing out of him. He's NBA ready. That was a great pick yeah. by the Orlando Magic. But um, another kid, 
I got to go back down to Sacramento, uh, Sacramento, man. Um, Keegan Talk Murray, man. It. That's your Talk boy, man. I know you like Keegan Murray. I've been watching him a little bit. The kid has tools. Keegan Murray got tools. He, if, if, it, if it wasn't for these other two guys, he might be in the front right now. But who I got right now, because Pelo been a little hurt, and he is really balling, is Ben Matherin, man. Ben Matherin. Remember that name. Benedict yes, Indiana. Matherin. Remember, yes. remember that name, Benedict Matherin. So when you hear it, you're like, who is that? But when you see him play, the kid has game. He reminds me a little bit of Antoine Walker, man. He got that Antoine okay. Walker type game. He, you know, can shoot the three, play defense, big body, not afraid to be out there and do his thing. Uh, but Ben Matherin, that's my leading rookie this week, man. What you got? I like it. I, I, first off, I like every name you pick. Paulo is the front runner right now. He's running away with it. He averaging about twenty three and eight right now. Those are pretty much. Those are almost all star numbers. Yeah. Um, Benedict Matherin, he, the nerve of this guy. Like oh, he got he, you twenty and four. Don't, don't tell him he's not supposed to be there. I mean, twenty and twenty points as a rookie. We got two rookies out there. And, that's, plus, and right? I tell you what, that's another duo: Matherin and Halliburton. Because Halliburton Man. number two in the league and assists not, right now. They just not winning nothing. But if it, if they was yeah. winning games, I would have gave him some love because Halliburton is showing me he got some game, man. Seriously. And I always I always bring up Jay Ivey. Him and Kay Cunningham are building something special. Yeah, Jay um, Ivey doing all right, man. He, he play, he have, but that 11 and 3 with the mother guys in the 20s, they, they, <laughs> they, yeah. because all three of those teams are about the same type of records. But those other two guys, are, they're, they, they have more of an opportunity to be scored, you know? Yeah. Um, you already mentioned Keegan Murray, but I'll tell you something else. He missed the first few games of the season, but since he's come back, they started winning games. Yeah. Oh, I mean, uh, what, a week ago, they, or two weeks ago, they were at Sacramento zero, and now they hit a four team. real quick. I told Baby. you Sacramento was going to be a better team this year. I said that. I know they started slow, but man, they have a lot of great young talent on that team, man. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, I think he's doing a stand-up job on out there. I think the people that complained that they passed up on Jay Nivey, yeah, they, no, that's, not, that's, a, that's a wasted complaint. Yeah, Keegan yeah. Murray was a good pick. He was a great pickup. They, they don't fits. know the name. You know, people don't be knowing names line. because you know these new days. You don't know some of these guys until so you see them on the court. I never yeah, knew about the highlights. Nivey, you know. You yeah. saw the highlights, the Duncan and Baby John and all of that. You're like, what are you doing, <laughs> Sacramento? <laughs> they kind of got that already in, in Swiper, Darren Fox. But, man, so. it's, a, it's a two-guard league now, though. You know, you need yeah. two nice point guards out there, so. And they got the defensive guy from a couple years ago in um, Baylor, off night. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's his nickname. What is Davion Mitchell, I believe. I'm saying that right. Oh, Davion yeah. Mitchell. Oh, yeah. The other Mitchell. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot yeah. about that kid. Yeah, he's decent. He got some guys. I like he got him. Some too. I like I him. Like he's a strong defender. Yeah. Also, we somebody we haven't talked about right now, he's not setting the world on fire, but he's doing a lot for that team in Portland is Shaden Sharp. Mm. Shaden Sharp is somebody who we didn't see play at all last year in college. Um, and he's coming out, putting up 10 points a game for a number two team in the West. That's major. Yeah, he's one of the reasons why they're having a good season so far. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and just shout out Tyree Eason and Jalen Duran. Slow slow climb, but they're doing good things. And as well yeah. as Jabari Smith, the number three pick for Houston. I haven't seen him play yet. I've been trying to catch him play. I haven't seen him play. I think he needs to put on some more weight, though. He's a, he's a little KD-ish. Mm. He's frail. He's got a jumper. But at that position, I want to see him put on a little bit more weight. He gets bodied a lot. Um, okay, so another one of my favorite topics. Our way too soon MVP candidates. <laughs> B. Snow. Give me a top five this year so far. All right, top five. Let's go and B. Then we're going to go Doncic because he kind of had a slow week. Put him at four. At three, probably going to have to go with, um, I wrote it down. Who was at three? At three, I'm going to go with Tatum. Okay. At, at two, we're going, I got a new guy at number two by the mission. Man, man, man. Cleveland is playing some great basketball, man. And he yeah. is stepping up. His teeth are out. He like a dog that want to eat. And the bowl is right there in front of him. Like, I, and the thing that kills me is New York blew that, man. I don't care what nobody says, man. This was New York's 
first chance, and I don't know how long to get a real star on that team, man. And they've they been did. okay this year, but imagine him on that team right now. Oh, man, he would have been bringing it like he's bringing it for Cleveland. They blew that. They blew that up. Yeah, because that's where he wanted to go at first. Man, but um, spot but number they two are and, doing good. Yeah, they are doing spot good. number two, and then I'm keeping Giannis at number one. They lost one game this week, but, hey, Giannis is still playing some great basketball. Even when they lose, he's still giving you 35, 12, 4. I mean, it's just – yeah, no doubt. He's giving a video game numbers every game. I mean, every year, him and Joe. And I, you see, I need to put Jokic in there, and I know he belongs. But, man, it's a lot of great basketball going on right now. And the five I just gave you, they all playing great. Joker top five and assist. It's crazy. Seven foot top five and assist. That's why, I mean, <laughs> hey, Siakam was doing that before he got hurt. I wish he, he needed to get back out there. He was having a great beginning of the season, and he got hurt. Yeah. Technical difficulties. Got to switch camera. What happened? I'm like, you want to show me, bro? <laughs> no, my battery died on the other camera. So technical difficulties. We got to go to the granny backup. So sorry. Oh, y'all. granny backup. <laughs> 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 All right. So my list, my top five. Um, I'm gonna start at five, but I'm gonna give an honorable mention to a couple guys that you named. That's not on my list, but I do think will be on my list by the end of the season, and that's Joel Embiid and Luka Doncic. And the only reason why they're not there right now is team position. I see Mavericks climbing up, and once they do, Luka going to shoot back up on mine. Luka has one game under 30 points this season. All right, keep yeah. going. That's why I say the only, the only, my only reason is one team, game out of is 12, team position. <laughs> Team position and is my only reason right now. They like okay. seven, eight right now. They yeah, they that's six and five up. or something like that. Yeah, they six and five. Yeah. Okay, so starting at number five, Spider Mitchell. The impact he's had in Cleveland has been ridiculous. I mean, uh, we can't say enough about uh, about his scoring impact. He's he's made them one of the top Eastern Conference favorites. Number four. The exciting, the electrifying Ja Morant. Hey, Ja Morant. Nice balling. Ja is putting up like 29 and 7. He had a great game last right night. Uh, he had a great, I don't know they're, when this is going to air, but yeah, last night on Friday night, he had a great game. Yeah, and they're, they're top three, three or four in the West right now. So, Ja. Number three, Trey Young. Mm. Trey Young is putting wow. up about 20, what is it, 26, 27, and nine assists. Mm. And they're number three or four in the East. Trey Young has the Hawks going crazy. I like that. I'm a big Trey Young fan. I'm a yeah. big Trey Young fan. I like that. Yeah, Ice Trey. I'm going to give him one of these for you, Ice Trey. That's well earned so far. Number two, Jason Tatum. Yeah, it's a Tatum. Get him up there. Jason Tatum on his grown man this year. It's a yes, steady sir. climb, steady development for him each and every year. And this year, he is just he's top tier. He's top tier. He's balling for that team. And like you said, Boston is they on a run right now. They're playing out of their mind. And he's the main reason for that. Averaging like 130 points over the last three or four games. So <laughs> stupid. Talk about it. <laughs> and uh number one, of course. The man, the myth, the legend, Giannis. Giannis Antetokounmpo. He's going crazy right now. Number one overall <laughs> team in the league. He's putting up 32 points, 12 boards. It's just ridiculous. I almost called that on a dot without looking. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's ridiculous. Video game numbers, man. <laughs> yeah. Whoever created him, they just cheated. <laughs> hey, they cheated. Hey, but, hey, when they say, man, working hard don't matter, that kid was not who he is, you know? And I saw a video yesterday. He was saying, you know, being humble. He was like, God made me humble. I can't shoot three. He was like, <laughs> handsome. I'm on a great team. I could duck on anybody. I, he's like, but I can't shoot three. So I'm humble. Yeah. I, I, I love that guy, man. I yeah. love Giannis, man. Seriously, man. You I see, we both love him at the number one spot, man. He's a great player. He's great for the league. Seriously. Yeah, Giannis, Giannis is the truth. And I'm a Chicago Bulls fan, and he's in our division, and he kills us on a regular, but I can't be biased on this show. I love Giannis. Yeah. Love Giannis. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into a little bit of drama. A little drama. You know, this has been so upbeat and positive. Let's switch it up a little bit. Jacques Vaughn. First off, congratulations, Jacques Vaughn. 
He has been named the head coach of the Brooklyn Nets officially. But after rumors swirled a couple of weeks ago, a week ago, about Emi Udoka getting that job, how do you feel about Vaughn getting it now after reports of other teams imploring the Nets to leave Udoka alone? I think it's still going to happen. I just think the timing was wrong. It's just the whole Kyrie situation messes up everything. You know, I think I saw reports this morning, something about if he has like another week to just do some things they want him to do, or they're going to remove him off the team, just completely just drop him. You talking so, about Kyrie? Yeah, Kyrie Irving. Well, I, the last few things I've seen with Kyrie is they've been having positive meetings. I've yeah, been seeing that a lot. I saw something this morning, though, as of Saturday, that they're saying he only has so much time to finish a few more things that they're going to drop him. Yeah, there's a new story that's out there you might want to look out after, after the show. I'll check, yeah, I'll check that out because they but, said um, that's he the wasn't thing, on the um, list no more. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, they have enough going on. Right. That's supposed to be a team that's supposed to be looking at the title this year. It's a great team. They have a lot of great players on it. You got the Ben debacle. You got the Kyrie thing. You can't bring on a third wheel, bro. Like, yeah. come on, we already got two things we're dealing with. Now you're going to bring that in. Now it's, it's already a circus. We're already in New York. We are already front page news and not because of the right reason. So you bring him on and now, now it's even worse. Now you got a coach that's dealing with all of that. You got a player that's dealing with all of that. You got a guy that's not, that needs to be coached up. So I think it was a smart move because for one, he's been the coach before. He's been there. He knows the players. He knows the team. The best thing to do is to get through this season. See how yeah. things shake up. Make another decision at the end of the day. You can't continue to pile on, especially in New York. Now this is Utah, Milwaukee. Sacramento, somewhere where, you know, the news story is kind of quiet. You probably can do, you know, get away with a few extra things. But in New York, you can't keep bringing in that that next story and it's not about basketball. Because guess what it's going to do? It's going to shine on the team. The team's not going to play well. Okay, well, nobody says, but it happens, you know. Because every game, yeah. we're not talking about basketball. We're talking about Kyrie. We're talking about yeah. Ben. We're talking about Udoka. We're talking about what happened, you know. We're not, we're not talking about shots or, you know, who, who won the game with a score anymore, you know. Yeah, that's my, that's my thing on it, man. It's definitely been a lot of drama. But do you agree with the decision, though? Yes. OK, well, I'll put it like this. I'll, congratulations to Jacques Vaughn. I like him. Uh, it was probably the right move to make. They He's been around there for a little while and they've been playing some good ball thanks to him. But I don't I like, the way like it too. I don't like if there's truth to these reports, I don't like the thought of the Nets being bullied into a decision. If Udoka was their guy, then let him be their guy. Don't let everybody else change your mind on that. He didn't do anything illegal. It might have been immoral, but for all we know, Brooklyn don't have those same standards. So that that's my only gripe with it is, you know, you can't, if that's the guy I want, ain't nobody going to talk me out of it. Plain and simple. Um, Stop the Kobe trade. I'm not, <laughs> they, they, I mean, the Chris Paul trade back in the day. So. Yeah. What people don't understand, the league still does have the last say on a lot of things that we don't know about. And this proves it with that. So. Yeah, without a doubt. So, yeah, um, definitely a interesting situation they got there in Brooklyn. But congratulations to Mr. Jacques Vaughn. Yes, sir. Um, technical difficulties have been resolved, at least for the moment. We got some, some non-grady footage back, so yes, shout out to that. looking handsome over there, baby. <laughs> so, uh, all right, let's lighten this thing back up. They just dropped a new City Edition unis, and we seen some on court in action the other night. What are you thinking about them, the, the, the new Nike City Edition jerseys? I thought we were supposed to be lightening up the move. Trash! Trash! <laughs> now, I saw a couple of them that weren't that bad. Uh, the Memphis one looked kind of hot last night, I can't lie. That Memphis yeah. looked good last night. I saw a couple of them that's not that bad, but it looked like some fifth graders connected, you know, put these together, man. I'm sorry. I don't see yeah. it. I'm usually excited about the little designs and stuff that Nike pulls off, and I feel like they dropped the ball this time, man. It, it just looks so plain and so there's no excitement to these at all. You're right. They are simple, um, like they ran out of ideas this year. I did like the Atlanta one on court, and I'm hoping that they look a lot better on court. Yeah. Washington kind of got this pink thing going on, and I'm kind of curious about it. I want to see how that look on court. The Miami Heat one looks stupid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't yeah. like that one at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Chicago's is so basic. Yeah, yeah. It's like a warm up jersey. Um, and that's what I'm saying too. It just don't. It don't. It's not popping at all. There's no pop to it. No excitement. Phillies is plain, but they say brotherly love across it. That's a little bit different. Um, I like the purple Noya. That joint is decent. Um, but yeah, they they are so plain and basic. And I'll leave a link in the description. Yeah. So, so if you haven't seen them yet, you'll get a chance to check it out. And y'all <laughs> let us know in the comments what you think and what's your favorite one. Yes, sir. <laughs> so yeah, they, they could have came a little bit a little bit harder than that. They could have came yes, a little sir. bit harder than that. It is what it is. But moving on. So we talked about it at the top of the show, but give me a little breakdown because it was a long night. How was your Tuesday? Without hoops, how did it go this week? What did you what did what did you do? What did you choose? Modern Warfare Two, Call of okay. Duty is back, and I've been hey I've been tied in. You know I'm in the trenches with the goons, and I'm not gonna lie, man. I don't know if you guys are into the whole Call of Duty Modern Warfare thing. If you are, you know, let us know in the chat. But yes, that's what I did all Tuesday, man. I I, I did. I got my vote on, and just came on home and got on the game. Man, it was a boring day, man. I, I miss basketball like crazy. It was like missing my girlfriend. Seriously, <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. Yeah, it was. It was a long one for me too, but it also gave me a chance to get done uh, some uh, some schoolwork. Um, I am in school, uh, so that definitely helped me out. And I caught some some shows. I, I got up on that new Amazon show they've been advertising, The Peripheral. And it's been pretty good. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, uh, if you 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 you're, you're looking for something, something to watch, you heard it here on my hoops, the peripheral. And, nice and you new know show. what? Since you say that, I did get into a new show on Tuesday too. Um, All Rise. So it's probably it's okay. about four four seasons of it. I think it comes on Fox. I got into the first season. Pretty good. Pretty good show about um a black judge. Pretty good, man. All Rise. Nice. It's on um All Rise. All Rise. I'm gonna check That's that one good. out too. Yeah, put black that one judge, on the man. list. Black, black woman judge. It's a really good show. Seriously. Oh, yeah. Definitely going to put that on the list. All rise. All right. Okay. So next week, we got a full slate. Got any particular games you're looking forward to? Any particular night? We gave a lot of love to Boston today. And um, that's what I'm looking forward to seeing. Boston ATL. That game is going to be jumping. It's in the ATL. I'm excited to see that. Boston, New Orleans. That's going to be another great game that I want to see. Some great young teams that are having great seasons so far. Biggest game of the week, though, Nets Lakers. Nets Lakers. So okay. you get to see what both of those guys look like. They both not having great seasons. Somebody got to win. You know, <laughs> not football. Nobody will go home with a tie. Somebody got to win. It's going to be a great boxing match. <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. So for me. I'm looking ahead to, and that's a, it, the whole week got some good games. Um, Monday got some good games. OKC in Boston, uh, Detroit, and Toronto, Phoenix and Miami, Atlanta and Milwaukee is definitely going to be a good one on Monday. But I'm looking ahead at Wednesday. Wednesday got a lineup out of this world. You got the Atlanta, Boston that you just mentioned. You got. Uh, Miami at Toronto, Cleveland, Milwaukee, and Chicago, New Orleans. Fire, yeah. fire, fire. Wednesday. Yeah, Jimmy Butler's been playing some better ball for the for the Heat. You know they they've been starting to look better. So, but and I, then I mean, Golden State and Phoenix to end the night. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what it is about Phoenix, man. I don't got no love for them, man. I think they're gonna still make the playoffs, but they they just not exciting still- to watch no more. They not, but they still they, winning though. They, 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 you know, they're they not put, fighting. I don't know what that is. Weird, yeah, but they, but they're winning though. They're winning. I think it's just they're going through a lot over there. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, an exciting week. We got, like I said, a full no slate. Doubt. So no doubt. any final, any final thoughts? No, anything that we missed out that you want to talk about? Um. Hey, got to hats off to Steph Curry, man. Steph Curry had a great week. He had forty-seven the other night. Put up 42 another night. I mean, the numbers Steph Curry's been putting up this week have been phenomenal. Um, I'm a, I'm a former point guard. So I'm always going to have love for a point guard. And, um, and seeing what he's doing, I think he said he's in his prime right now. He's 33, something like 34. But, um, a great week for Steph Curry. Like I say, um, they're not in the where they should be, but he's still playing ball. He's still playing at the top of his game. And, um, I've got to give a shout out to him. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. Well, so. Man. You know what, before we go, we haven't had a 50-point score this year, have we? 
No, we had a couple 40 pieces, but not 50 yet. It's coming. Let's predict one before we get out of here, man. I say the first 50-point game, I say Tatum going to give it to us. Tatum going to give us the first 50-point game of the season. What you think? Give me one one off your head. Just throw one out there. Well, at the risk of my camera battery dying again, I'm going to just ride with what you said in Tatum. <laughs> It's a great choice, though. It's a great it choice. Is, it is. It's, it's a likely <laughs> choice. And, and that's crazy. Nobody so, has put up 50 yet. Mm. Yeah, it's coming, though. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a wonderful week, and the season just keeps on leveling up. It gets better and better and better. Word of the day, word of the season is parody, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. So, please, like, share, subscribe. And comment, man. Join in on this fire conversation and tell us what you thought about, man. Tell us what you thought about the show. Tell us what you thought about the week. Tell us your favorite teams. Tell us what you're looking forward to next week. Everybody, keep watching. From us here at On My Hoops, we love you. And we out. Peace.